G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. I said at the beginning, there's an actual job that's come up that I'm gonna to have to flatten the board with. And this is a technique that a lot of times we as woodworkers have to employ, even if you have machines. The majority of workshops or um, home workshops only have a six inch, some have an eight inch jointer, but very rarely do they have 12 or 16 inch jointers. So what happens, the thicknesses are 15 inches wide, which is great, that wide, but if you've got a board 12 inches wide and you've only got a six inch jointer, it's very hard to get a dead flat bottom. So the technique I just shared with you there is how you can get a bottom and I'll show you exactly in real time how to do it on a flitch. Just move this to one side. Now, got two flitches here, and there, oh, good, Jesus, that hurt. <laughs> there for a job that I've got an idea might work, but in order to see if it'll work, I've actually got to try the idea out. So what I'll do, I'll show you how I flatten these boards, I'll show you how to do it with hand planes, and I'll show you a technique you can use on the thicknesser that can save you a lot of time and a lot of energy. It doesn't necessarily get the board 100% true, but it takes about 80% of the work out of it for you. So this first one, not this one. Oh. Where's Bob when you need him? Oh. This first one, I'll see how much of a wind it's got in it. And what I want is this wide section to actually be the top. This underside is the bottom. So for me, the crucial um, part of this is to get this dead flat without any twists and warps. If this has got a couple of twists and warps in it, I can cope with that for how it's going to be made and what it's going to be made into, which I might share with you later. And um, the number one priority is to get the top flat. So put winding sticks on it. Grab a piece of chalk. And I'll have a look, excuse me. Okay, so I'm up down here. So I don't know if that's a dip here. Okay, what's causing that? I'm looking straight down the board here and this outboard stick is high which suggests to me that I've got a high spot there but it could mean I've got a low spot here but actually what's happened is right there there's a hump so as I look down here there's an air gap see that between this winding stick and the piece of timber so here is a high point because if I push this down and then view up, these two sticks are parallel. So there's a high point there. So I'll mark that with a piece of chalk. The rest of it looks all right. So now it's a question of, first of all, I've got to get the board flattish. And for that, I'm going to use the hogging plane. I'm not going to use a scrub plane because I want to keep this as thick as I can. And this is called a hold down. And that's exactly what it does. Holds it down. And I might just put a stop in the vise here. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Now I'll work on this high spot. As a rule, if I was jointing this board, I'd be using a number seven or triplane, one or the other. But seeing I know what I'm looking at and they're only little lumps, that's why I'm using a smaller plane to start with. Sticks out again. Still 
a little bit to go here. Okay, that's now no light between here and the bottom of the winding stick, and I'm still high a bit here. So I will, I'll knock a bit off there. It's only a fraction further up now and I think that most likely will come out when I'm actually flattening it and straighten it with a, a shooting plane. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go over the entire board with the scrub plane just to clean it up. I'll check it again and then I'll start shooting it with a longer plane. Candle wax on it. Clamped off that other end so I can get in here. Okay, now I think it's time to bring in a long plane. I'll use a metal plane for this, as I said before, because the HT Gordon mouths are just too fine for really rough work. So we'll bring out the big guns. And you can see what I meant before about <clears throat> when you're using a, a small plane to go across a large board. For instance, this part here. See how I actually gouged through that because the plane dipped down and came up the other side. Whereas with a joining plane, see that it goes straight over the top, cuts here, cuts there, won't cut there because the sole is long enough to breach the gap. Not going to be happy. Got shavings in his bucket. Let's go one more time. I think I'll use a slightly smaller one. Oh, because boy, that's a heavy one. That was number eight, by the way. This is a number seven. All right. Now I know that's flat on the top, I'll run a smoothing plane over it and then we can do the bottom. To get a stop I'm using a bench hook and I'm just putting it in my vise. That'll work as a break for when I'm planing this.
Now, for the purpose of the exercise, that is good enough. It's had the warp taken out of it or the twist. It's been flattened, so I know it's flat, and it's been smoothed to about 95%, which is all I need. Now, <clears throat> if you had a thicknesser that was 15 inches wide, what you could do, in fact, I think I'll go and do it because I'm out of breath, is now you've got a flat side, you can put it through the thicknesser, which will dress the other side for you. Which, of course, you couldn't do if you only had a six inch or a eight inch jointer. So I'll get my breath back, we'll go and turn the thickness on, and I'll show you what I mean. Don't you love live TV? See that split? That's enough to make the board a little bit too wide to go through the thicknesser. So I'm going to have to plane a bit off. You can't say we don't bring you drama and suspense. Not like those reality TV shows. This is real. Okay, here we go. Doesn't get used for ages. Then it gets used twice in one show. I'll keep that. I'll glue it on later on. Where's the measuring tape? Okay. As I used to say, I'm sorry, I'll try that again. Dare I say, a flitch that if you had a small workshop, limited tools, you could not have machined. And it proves the fact that you can plane it by hand, but oh, it's a long process. This little bit here, I'm not worried about because that's the underside. And I'll go over that once I've got the job finished with a smoothing plane to clean the surface up. And in here, a little bit down the track, I'm going to fix this with what they call bow ties or butterfly cleats or dovetail wedges, whatever you want to call them. All right, that's that part of the job done. <laughs>